Tommy Hendricks, how do you do? If you don't know already or care, but you might, remember my father, Jimmy Hendricks. And forgive me for speaking with my mouth open. Get food in. <laughs> Get more food. Troy asked me about a year ago. Or so. Yeah, I probably went, it probably was about a year ago. About a year ago. If I do some film with him and stuff. I told him, oh, let me think about it. I was really doing some other thing. I was able to go on the road with my Uncle Leon Andrix. Um, we did a concert tour called the Keeper of the Flame Tour. And the thing about it's this. My father, before he passed away, had said to me at home, we wanted, after he came back from Britain, in Germany, you know, European Europe, if he wanted to uh, get my uncle, Leon, his brother, and myself, his son, and put together a family band. There was a family called the King Family, all towhead blinds down in LA, and they had a show where everybody played an instrument or sang or danced. And it was wonderful, dude. I mean, I used to watch it all the time. I love the little chicks, man. The, the daughters and the nieces. It was great, man. Was <laughs> rock and great. roll. It was rock and roll, but yeah. it was like a big ass family, you know? And they played all kinds of music. And we'd all watch the show every week. And it was wonderful. The King family, they had one uncle or brother or whatever, we had an uncle named Alvino Ray. He played the slide guitar like as if it were my dad in Blanya. And, <laughs> and he would play the slide guitar so well, he could make it. You know how they say to the guitar players, you made that guitar speak. It was like, ow, 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 ow. Well, Alvino Ray could play the slide guitar and go, Alvino Ray, now he's playing. And it was like, he made his guitar speak English. 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 <laughs> and that's what's up. Vancouver at the shrine uh, where my family was property and all that, you know. And the musicians would come there, like the people with the stones, the doors, everybody, Alvin, everybody would go there. And because musicians didn't make very much money back then, it was like 15 bucks a night a man. And my family would let them come to our place and if you wash dishes or served tables, then you'd be able to eat for free. And because you had $15 a night, you could eat and buy gas, but you didn't have a place to sleep. Or you could get a place to sleep for a night and eat, but then you didn't have gas to get anywhere. And management and agents were making all the money back then. My family worked it out. Ah, get my brother, man. I'm doing all right. We're doing a documentary. Are you there or what? Mm -hmm. You gonna be down there? Maybe we'll pop in. All right, bro. Aside from your dad's music, what other music were you rocking out to it at that point? It would blow your mind, man. Um, I have lists, I have, I'm knowledgeable in most genres of music. But originally, because my family was from Florida and the South, Pensacola, where my mom was born and all that, and the family was there. Uh, country. Cool. And Western. And if you tell anyone that knows country or Western music, and you should tell them, I love country western music. It will knock you out or eat in the eyes or something like that because it's two separate genres. And I, I, in my mind's eye, just from your question, I can see the difference. Country is natural, banjo, 
violin, fiddle. But Western, they dress them like this. Yeah, exactly. Real. You kind of see you're, you're, you're inspired by that, that, that vibe. Like, yeah, and I was inspired by that. And, Very cool. And I was like, all oh, in it, you know? And I know shit, it's called shit kicker music. You know, there's hillbilly music, there's backwood music, there's country music, there's, there's western music. But we called it shit kicker music. You know, where you go and you're kicking the shit out of the way because you're a cowboy, baby. And, and that was really the truth. Yeah. Cool. cool. Very cool. And so then rhythm and blues, of course, but I was fortunate in my life, and this is probably more toward what we're going for. I was fortunate enough, not only because of my father, but because my mother was also a singer and two famous people of that time and era that were inspirational, but they were friends, they had like went to school together and all that. Um, I don't want to go off top here. Well, we played every type of music. Willie Nelson, the famous Willie Nelson, either knew or dated my grandmother, my mom's mom, and they were British Irish from Florida. And across the United States, they came to California. But the fact is, Willie Nelson, I remember, came to my grandmother's home and rang the doorbell. And he's going, let me see if I can do this. Oh, Will, how are you? I'd love to see you if we got the time. And my grandmother comes and tells me, comes from the kitchen and says, Lalo, I want you to see who that is. And I open up the door and go, Mama, it, it looks like a, a man, but it looks like a girl because he has a braid that's like three feet long. And she says, and ask him what his name is. And I said, What's your name, person? And he says, Tell him it's Willie. Tell Lil it's Willie Nelson. And I said, Mama, it's Willie Nelson. And she said, Is he standing on my grass? Because if he is, I'm going to wet him with the hose. And I said, Mama, I don't want to say she is. Is he standing on my lawn? I said, yes, ma'am. He's not on the sidewalk, the uh, walkway. I said, no, ma'am, he is not. Get the hose. I go, Mama, I can't do that. He's singing a song. And she says, I don't care what he's saying. She walks outside, goes and picks up the hose and goes, you're standing on my lawn. You know how I feel about that. And wet him. And he's going, while she's wetting him, he's going, Oh, Lil, I just want you to say I love you. Will you see me, Lil? And she said, I don't want to hear your jabber calling, you know. And she wet him. Soaked him. Oh, yeah. Bathed him, baby. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. with, with her hose, with her snotty with him. And he stepped on to the sidewalk walkway and says, I'm sorry for stepping on the lawn. <laughs> I remember that. He man. sings it. And it's so, so and he's singing. And, and then what know, happened after and that? I'm also glad I'm not holding on my guitar. Because it has a hole in it. And she said, not that you know how to play it. And, she, and they laugh. They talk. I don't know if she hung her shirt up to dry or not. I don't recall. Uh, when I was a kid, because my family's like mixed, you know, of Spanish uh, brothers and sisters and white. And it's like crazy. We're like a Heinz 57. 
I grew up believing that I looked like this dude named Troy Donahue. You look at look it up on Google. He's a blonde haired dude. And he did all those surfer car movies and all that in the 60s. And the guy was like, wow, he got the chicks. And it was like, wow. And I'd look in the mirror and I'd think I'd look like Troy Donahue. Hey, baby, what it go? I don't look a damn thing like Troy Donahue. But look him up. He's a cool dude. You know, I don't think I ever met him, but I saw his movies. All those 60s surf flips and all that stuff. I was out down in California doing all that kind of crazy stuff. I was doing like country western. I know how to do, uh, um, my grandmother taught me how to do the Charleston. Cause she used to do the Charleston. Charleston. That's some old dance. I don't even know if it's 20s, 30s, 40s. Yeah. But, um, you guys can look it up. Who's gonna get up, get up, get up? <laughs> Freak to see you, my brother. Oh, my brother. Are you doing? doing a documentary with these people? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tell them your name and that. Terry Singh. If you look me up at terrysingh.com. Yeah. <laughs> look me, man. I've been so busy, man. I played with, with McCartney at Rogers Arena. Yeah, I know that. On the one on one. Yeah. Are you going to be the world tour with my uncle Leon yeah. Hendrick? I know you too, mother. You know, you know Johnny? Johnny Hendrick? I met you before. No, no, no. There's Jimmy. Oh, good. Sir. Finally, somebody I don't know. I've been so the hell up. <laughs> this is a great guitar player. <laughs> oh, uh, what's a great Ryan, guitar Ryan player? Castle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, dad, my dad's birthday is on Monday. This is the son of Jimi Hendrix. He doesn't oh, wow. know. I love it when they don't know. <laughs> Yeah, this is the first one, son of Johnny, Whoa, or Jimmy Hendrix. Legend, have you heard of him? <laughs> yeah. We still love Jimmy. I just was watching him watching thing last night. Uh, uh, he was doing an acoustic thing on a 12 string. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jimmy, I, I, I don't know if I got your autograph, but I've got... Al Hendricks autograph, I got That's Hendrix's my grandpa, man. Yeah. Yep. You got so, my grandpa's autograph? Yes. This is some shit, um, dog. Well, yeah. I'll tell you how I got it. How? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sit okay. your ass down. Yes. I go, uh, uh, my real name is Frank Tassick, but I, I, my show name is Frank Richard. And uh, this sounds better. Well, okay, it's a, it's a funny story. It just so happens some people uh, uh, I got a couple of made it down on the anniversary. I got two. Back in 94. Here, here, here. Oh, he's oh, dead and his grave. The one, wow. the one that's got the guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a the old gravestone up, the new one. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know, I love so they were down there. Uh, and they just, just like they're, you know, they're, uh, uh, what do you call it, on a, on a, on a, like a family tour kind of thing, like a tribute tour? Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, and these, these guys are, this is going back 94, this is like over 20 years ago. So, uh, uh, I, I, I can't remember the guys. They, I don't blame you. I was only like three years old. Uh, there, there, no. there were guys who used to hang around Cabo's playing that and stuff like that. And we're over there house jamming and they, 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 they were the type of guys who get on there once a year or whatever, you know, on their anniversary. Yep. And anyways, they said, actually the guy's name was Mark. To Mark. I'm not while you interviewed this guy. named Mark, right? So Mark. Anyways, the whole uh, at the time they went down there to Renton, Washington, they just so happened had to bump into four of Jimmy's relatives, including his dad, and they signed the stencil gravestone, right? Holy with, with crayon, and it's it's a real pen. I actually took it to a, a place that was my frame it, and I said, don't frame it. Leave it. Just, so I got it in a tube, and it's sitting in a tube. I mean, the parchment paper's getting pretty ripped right about now, so... I, why wouldn't I know Johnny? Me and him go way back you know what, it's, it's very such a good guy. I, I love the guy to death. You know what? And how do I say this? You know what? Like he is he, he is he's one of my best friends. You know like he, he he does a lot of art, he does a lot of he does a lot of uh, music, he does a lot of everything. My pleasure to uh, talk about uh, Johnny. Uh, the one of the jobs of a musician is to affect the people that are in the music. And uh, when I first heard Johnny, in a very intimate setting of 50 people, I thought, you know, uh, he's affecting all of us 50 people. 
but it could be 75,000 people. And uh, they'd be affected too, uh, because his message is all about love. He's a true artist. I met Johnny in December of 2012. Down at West Beach Bar and Grill. He came in and sang a song with us. The guy's a killer on stage, that's for sure. Maximum performer. Performs like crazy. First time he performed with us, he got up on uh, on top of a table. The place was packed. It was incredible, man. It was just absolutely incredible. The place was packed. And Johnny's on top of the stage doing a little Jim Morrison act. And the place goes wild. And, uh, you know, what more can I say? We're here tonight to celebrate my good friend, Mr. Johnny Hendricks. Apparently we're making a documentary on this guy. Oh my god. We should make a documentary on Gorp, never mind. Oh man, don't give him a microphone, bro. Don't give me a microphone. He might wreck it. <laughs> He's wrecked several of mine, that's for sure. Just go for it, bro. Come on, Johnny! Oh, okay. Kill your shit, bro.
a, like a dive joint one night, right? Uh, my mom was supposed to know. Oh, what happens on the road stays on the road. What happens in the studio stays in the studio. I'm writing myself out because That's my mom goes to see this and she's going home. And she's going, wait, wait till I see you. And the thing is, he took me to this joint and Buddy Miles, Johnny Winter, and my father just walked up on stage, picked up their instruments, and started playing. So Johnny Winter is on bass, and my dad is on guitar. So they're playing and playing and playing, and everything's cool, and everybody's loving it. And they're playing like blues, and it's crazy. And then Johnny Winter looked at my dad and goes, you had, you had this in a, uh, how about you switch up? He goes, oh, let's do another song too, uh, Mr. Winter. He goes, well, Mr. Andrews, all right. So my father takes the bass, and it's a right-handed bass and a right-handed guitar. Right-handed bass, right-handed guitar. And they're playing. And they're doing more, more, whatever the riff, riff was. Then, Winter goes, well, is it about time? Uh, is it about time? It's, uh, and uh, he goes, well, all right. So, my dad takes off the guitar and takes the bass, and, and Winter takes the bass, and we're playing. My dad flips it upside down. And so Johnny Winter took a right-handed guitar, flipped it over upside down, and goes, well, then come on, baby. And I was playing like my dad used to, playing a right-handed guitar upside down, playing the hell out of it. So my dad goes, well, you know, Mr. Winter, this, you ain't the only one in here that can do that kind of crazy shit. Motherfucker! And he goes and flips the bass <laughs> over upside down, and they're both playing. So Robert Plant didn't really want to be a musician. He wanted to be a magician. And when I'd see him, he would have like this match, like a, like flash paper is called. And he'd go, "Hey kid," and it would go. And I love that man. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and I'd go, whoa! I'd be flipping out on that kind of stuff, man. It's part of all of our lives, all of our history, you know? Come on, you know? It's us. We're, you know? We just, we love and respect all of it. We want to be a part of it. We want to relive it. We want, it's like, they're, they still will play at the huge theaters in 3D, uh, Woodstock. People will get dressed up and go to see the Rocky Horror Show by Lou Adler. A show I attended and a friend of mine named Ruby Starr, she was in it. And she was with Black Oak, Arkansas, a band that was like, oh, they were killing. They played at the uh, California Jam Festival. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's life. It's my life, and I'm willing to share it with all of you. And, you know, thank you for everything you give me. Because it makes me want to share everything I have with you. Is that okay?